Welcome back to Smoky Ribs. I'm Russ Jones. Today, I'm going to be using the Long Star Grills Offset. We're going to be using the pit barrel cooker. We're doing ribs in each, and we're going to determine which produces the best tasting ribs. You've heard me say in the past that the pit barrel cooker is a, is a rib machine. And you've also seen me put out some really good ribs off the Long Star Grills Offset. Which one does the best job? We're going to find out today. Real quick, before I get started, I've had a lot of people ask me two different questions. One, where can they purchase the different t-shirts that I wear? Well, I just connected with Teespring, and some of you might be able to see it right below the player right there. Teespring and YouTube had connected together, and so you're able to see right below some of the t-shirts that I have available. Just click on any of that, it'll take you to the Teespring store. I have sweatshirts, I have hoodies, and I have different designs. This is one of them, I ordered this for myself. On the back here, that is a new design. So just have look in there and check out the different designs if you're interested. The second question is, people have asked me, how can they support my channel without going through PayPal and things like that? t-shirts. I get a little bit off of each sale, so you can definitely support this channel through the t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, sales, and uh, you get something for your money. All right, now let's get started with this cook. I'm just doing the ribs that I normally do when people come over, if I bring something to work. People love these ribs, and I always start with a mustard base, and all this mustard is really far is to give the seasoning something to adhere to but I promise you the times that I've done ribs without the mustard it's it's not as good I mean people say you can't taste the mustard in it and you can't not per se mustard but it does something to it because the ribs are better when I use mustard keep in mind mustard does have vinegar in it and I personally think that mustard does a couple things not only does it help the the seasonings penetrate a little bit deeper into the meat, but it also helps the uh, formation of the bark. So while we got them flipped on this side, I'm going to apply a rub. Now, I say these are the same ribs. I do experiment with different rubs. You use whatever rub you like. Press all this in. All right, that's the bottom side. We're going to flip them over. We're going to repeat the process. Now, so you know, I did remove the membrane. That's the only trimming I did on these. These are not for competition. These are backyard ribs, and we're going after taste and flavor. I've got the Lone Star Grills offset. It's already up to temp. I am running 275 degrees on that. We're going to run between 250 and 275. The charcoal is heating up for the pit barrel cooker. That will be going on momentarily. We're gonna to have to wait about 20 minutes once we do that. So the ribs are just gonna sit here. And by the time we put these on the smokers, they're gonna be completely wet. And the salt in this rub is going to pull out the moisture. And that's what you want. I just couldn't see firing up this big offset smoker just for one rack of ribs. So in addition to that, I'm gonna be doing this chuck roast, this beef chuck roast. Has nothing to do with the video, but I am gonna show you the seasoning I'm using, a subscriber, Jason. Not gonna say his last name, but his first name is Jason. I'm trying out your rub for the first time today. I tell you what, it smells really good. I actually took some and tasted it earlier. I really like the herbs you got going on with that. And uh, I could tell, it looks like you might either have some turbinado or some brown sugar in it. I could tell by the uh, consistency of it, the, the feel of it. So we're gonna see how it comes out of the shaker. Oh yeah, it's doing good. I could detect like a little bit of rosemary in that and it, it's really going to pair good with this beef. Now like I said, I'm not going to focus on this cook. I've actually done this before. The way I'm doing these, I'm making these for pull, pull beef sandwiches. 
and later on after we apply enough smoke I'm simply going to add a few other things to this we're going to cover it we're just going to let it break down and like I said make it strictly for sandwiches with barbecue sauce this is probably the one and only time you're going to see this in the video and we'll be monitoring temps with my Maverick XR50 going to be shooting for around 215 degrees but like anything else I will be probing for tenderness that's the telltale sign all right we're going to open our pit up First thing I'm going to do is slide this bottom tray out and onto that we're going to put this chuck roast off to the side and also we're going to add one rack of our ribs and as you can see, see how wet they are, did exactly what I said they would do. I'm running just a little over 250 right now, like I said I'm going to try to hold it between 250 and 275. The pit barrel cooker it for the most part pretty much hovers at 275. The wood that I'm using in the offset is a pecan wood. Here I have pecan chunks. These are very small. Pit bar cooker doesn't really use a lot. I guarantee you at the end of this cook, even some of these smaller pieces will still be in there. But it produces a nice smoke. I'm just gonna hang these up. We are good to go. I'm going to cover this. Roughly 3 hours and 45 minutes is typically what they take in this cooker. They will actually cook a little bit quicker in the pit barrel cooker than what they will in the offset because this, like I said, runs a minimum of 275. It can go up to as high as 325. It's more of a hotter cook, but does really well. And I tell you what, it's in the 40s right now. And I have been holding really good temperatures. It's been right at 250, maybe slightly over. I just put some wood in it. It's really maintaining temps. Beautiful today. All right, we're gonna open this up. We're gonna take a look at these ribs. They've been going about an hour and a half. And they're starting to look a little dry on top. So that is a perfect time to spritz these. Now I've got my spritz that I've used and I've shared this with y'all before. This is apple juice and bourbon. I've got 12 ounces of apple juice mixed with 6 ounces of bourbon. And here we go. We're going to do that about every 30 to 40 minutes from here on out. All right, now let's do a spritz on these. See how these are looking. There again, we're going to do this about every 30 to 40 minutes. Looking good. We have been going almost three and a half hours, and I've already spritzed this four times. I'm talking about the ribs. We're going to take a look and, and, and check this out. Still riding at 250. I mean, this thing has fluctuated a little bit. I've been, of course, maintaining my, my fire, you know, with the logs. But, I, man, this is really riding good today. 40-something degrees out here. It's dropping down to 30s tonight, but this thing has been behaving beautifully. There we go, once again. Now, look at this. We're getting some really good pullback on these bones. As you can see, these are getting tender. That's what I want to do. This is I'm looking. We're going to do a spritz. That's 200 degrees. Hey, you what, I'm not going to leave these in there much longer because they'll be falling apart. So what we got here. But look at it, it's probing. I really don't care what the temperature is doing. This, this is probing nice. And by the way, if you can't tell by some of the things I'm using, hey, I've been shopping over there at How to Barbecue Your Own. I tell you what, he's got one awesome barbecue shop and he's got all the cool toys. I love this spritzer. We're going to close her up. We're going to let it go maybe another 10, 15 minutes on that rack. Let's go over here and check the uh, pit barrel cooker, see where we're at. So you talk about consistency. I'm here to tell you normally the pit barrel cooker, these ribs would already be done. Or they'd be right there at it. 
and see I don't have as much pullback as I do on the offset and these went on the exact same time and this pit based on my previous experience normally runs about 275 minimum so let's see how we're probing here well if I can get that's probing pretty good but my temperature is not there yet so here's my thoughts on this I honestly think the outside temperature has something to do with this these are not cooking as fast as what they normally would in the summertime three and a half no more than three hours and 45 minutes I'm good to go we're in the uh, 40s dropping down to 30s I don't know what the actual temperature is it's somewhere around 45 if I had to guess and I can tell the effect it's making on this cooker let me spritz these real quick the offsets actually beating these as far as time goes they got a really nice color that's one thing I can say about both of these pits is that I've yet to have to wrap any ribs on this one or my offset because you still end up with a nice mahogany color all the way through all right we're gonna check the pit barrel cooker see how we're looking Ooh, boy that's got some pretty color on that we're over 202 203 feeling about right tell you what I'm gonna go ahead and pull these finally I tell you what I am not used to that normally this pit barrel cooker will cook way before I say way before use about an hour before my other uh, my offset here so I'm gonna spread some foil out we're gonna wrap these we're gonna put these now if you notice the pullback I've got pullback it's not quite as good as it was with the other rack All right, I'm gonna wrap these up we're going to let them rest along with the others. We're going to do a taste test here shortly. We are going to unwrap these. And I'm not going to say which is which. A friend of my wife is over here. She just got... When did you get here, Jennifer? Like 20 minutes ago? Yeah. She does not know which ribs come off of which smoker. So instead of me doing a taste test, which I will do a taste test... But I want her to do it because it's going to be completely unbiased because she don't know which smoker, what set of ribs come off of. I got to tell you, both ribs have about the same color on them. Keep in mind, these were never wrapped. These are cooked start to finish, unwrapped. And that's the way I like doing my ribs for backyard barbecue. Would they win a competition on appearance? Probably not. They're a little bit darker than what you would probably have for competition. Are they going to taste good? You betcha. All right, so let's flip them both over. What I'm going to do is take and cut a rib out of each rack right out of the middle. Alright, let's see what we're looking like there. Well, I'll tell you straight up, lots of juice. I don't know if you can see that in the light. Very juicy rib. Now let's go into this rack and see what we're looking like. Now let's see what the smoke ring looks like on this one. About the same. The juiciness. About the same. Alright, let's set these... Right, I gotta remember which is which. I'm gonna set this one here and this one here. Come on in, Gen Jennifer. All right, this one come from this rack. This one come from this rack. Go ahead and taste a bite of each one. Start with this one. Tender. Very. Juicy. Very. Good. Mm-hmm. Course. familiar fa flavor oh yes absolutely. She, she's had my <laughs> she's had my ribs in the past mm -hmm. okay set that mm -hmm. one down just one bite now go ahead and if you want to rinse your mouth out and get that taste out you want to do that like mm, nah. no okay i can get it it's fine all right let's see here 
Any difference? Mm -hmm. A definite difference. Which one's better? This one. Oh, that this one. one better. That one's better. Really? To, me. to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that's that is the pit barrel cooker. Really? That is the Lone Star Grills. That's the offset. That's the barrel. I like this one better. <laughs> hey, totally unbiased. She had no idea. And, you know, I haven't tasted these yet, but I know from experience just how good the pit barrel cooker ribs are. I've said it in the past, it's like a rib machine. Now, that's not to say that these ribs coming off the Lone Star Grills aren't absolutely fantastic, but... Which, which every time you've, I mean, there is nothing that I have eaten that I didn't like. But, but you, you could, you could tell yeah. a definite, definite yes, difference. I can. All right, here's some giveaways. Look at the back of this one. See the char? That's from the offset. They went oh. completely on their backs the whole time. Mm -hmm. If you notice the backs of these, they were hanging. And so the front and the back, there's really not a lot of difference in the color, as you can see right here. There's not a lot of difference. That's kind of a dead giveaway there, but yeah, th that's the offset. And this is the pit barrel cooker. I didn't mm -hmm. mean to touch your rib. You can go no, ahead and have them. I you can put them you. in a plate or whatever and <laughs> have at it. All right, yes, I definitely <clears throat> So there you go. Now I'm gonna cut one of each and do the same thing. Let's take a bite of the Lone Star Grills. Here we go. Mm. Mm. Those are very tender, almost. I, I'm not going to say almost too tender, but, you know, if you're doing competition, they are definitely trying to come off the bone, as you can see right there. All right, let's try the pit barrel cooker. Wow. Wow. Let me do that again, because to be honest with you, I'm not telling a whole lot of difference there. But there again, I didn't give it enough time in between that bite. Really good rib. Mm -hmm. Possum, get down. Get down. That's my cat we call Possum. <laughs> you know what? They're very similar in flavor, but I, I tend to agree with you. There is something about this one that has that little extra something that I'm definitely picking up. The only difference I can see in today's cook from what I'm used to seeing is the uh, pit barrel cooker took longer to cook than what the offset did, and I'm not used to that. Normally, the pit barrel cooker does them in record time, three and a half to three hours and 45 minutes, whereas normally on the offset, it takes about four, four and a half hours. They were running pretty close, but this one beat them out by about 30 minutes. Excellent ribs either way, but um, the winner goes to the pit barrel cooker on today's cook. Hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, smoke your ribs.